Hey everybody, you're listening to Raw with Marty Gallagher, J.P. Bryce, and Jim Steele on ICTV. Today we're discussing goal setting. You know, they say that uh, a goal without a plan is just a wish, so we've recruited our two coaches, and we're going to discuss goal setting and planning based on their many years of coaching world champion powerlifters and collegiate athletes. So... Guys, first of all, I want to start with what's the difference between working out and training? What's the difference? Well, in, in you know, working out, everything's free form. You just walk into the gym and you do what you feel like doing, which is most likely some favored body part, and you do it in the usual way, and that gets you off. And, like bench. You know, we play to your strengths, right? Because yeah. <clears throat> that's... Uh, you know, makes you happy and then you leave. Training is different. Training is, I am here, I want to get there, I'm uh, going to get there sequentially. Right. Yeah. Right. Training for something. Yeah. Right. So, you know, yeah, Jimmy, you you, you can rip on that, right? Yeah. You just, training is when you're in training. I like to think of it like Marciano going away for, you know, <laughs> to the cat skills or wherever yep. uh, yep. that's he's in training the rest of the time he's working out you know the rest of the year and then those last 20 weeks or whatever he did that's his training every every workout uh, you have a, a numeric goal going in I mean if you're leading up to a competition yeah. and I really don't care if it's a a powerlifting competition, or Olympic competition, or a training camp. If you want to peak strength, right. you're going to take, classically, we would take 12 weeks, and divide the 12 weeks into three four-week mini-cycles. And within each of those four-week mini-cycles, we'd work a certain rep range and certain techniques. And then we'd shift. We'd shift in the second four and then in the final four, we'd usually peak out with, I don't know, maybe triples, doubles, singles. Right. You know, and, you know, whatever, if there was gear allowed or whatever the deal was, we would fine-tune it and specialize it to that. But it was highly specialized. There wasn't a lot of uh, assistance work at the end, very little, if any, actually. Yeah. And it's all very precise, isn't it? I mean, you have to nail a certain poundage a certain amount of times whether it's you know one rep or five reps or whatever it's very very precise and you've got to hit those numbers every single week otherwise you fall behind and you don't uh, you don't make the end goal you know what yeah. the biggest you know what the biggest single mistake is huh? hmm. people people overestimate what was that yeah nothing is my, <laughs> my, my beautiful wife she, she thought you were talking to her with the headphones <laughs> on, oblivious. <laughs> God, anyway. All right, so here we go. Uh, yeah, so I lost my train of thought. So I was looking at the single uh, most mistake or something you're saying. We're going to say something. You said, uh, about, you said how planned out it has to be. Uh, yeah, it has to be very precise. Well, uh, you know, it, uh, Jimmy, take it away, man. I'm just I'm still. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, you know, and, and I've, uh, Marty's always said this, and Kirk said this, and Fred Hatcher always said this. There's no misrest in your training cycle. Zero. There's no excuse for misrest. We don't miss any reps. You plan it out, so you're not going to miss the rep, and you're going to get this much stronger every week. Now, off season, yeah, you want to push it and do some stupid, you know, go to failure or whatever, but not, not. Yeah. In, uh, not in your training cycle, man. You have to build it every week, and you have to get those reps. Oh, and, and I remember my lost thought. What I was going to say is that is that the the champions that I've worked with and been around, they are ruthless in their initial self assessment. Yeah. Right. Like we all think high. You know, we all think like, yeah, man, I'm going to rip into this thing, and then I'm going to keep getting better and better. And they're like, no, I better start out really low. And yeah. build momentum, and and that's the hard yeah. part. You really have to swallow your ego at the start of the cycle. And, that, and well, that comes with if you're a good coach who's been there, or a lifter who's really with it, you know, who really gets it as an experience. Yeah, and Mar Marty, you're always talking about when be when you start a 12 week cycle, your lifters will uh, most of the time start at 10 10 below their max. 
So it kind of gives uh, them some wiggle room at the start. Well, but 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 what what you do, and and Jim can attest to this, is let's say you're a you're an 800 pound squatter, legitimate, right? Mm. IPF like like Rob Wagner. Yeah. Well, how do you make 400 or 450 heavy? Well, there's different ways you can do it. You can do it for high reps. You can do it for multiple sets. You can go extra deep. You can use pauses. Um, I don't know what else. Slow Jimmy it can down. Right. Chance. Rack. You can do slow yeah. it down. Shift your rep speed. Right. You, you know. So that's what you do. But you you make it harder. You make the lighter weights heavy at the beginning of the cycle. You kind of gives you that conditioning initial burst. Then when you hit the second four weeks, that's when the real work starts. That's when we tie into the five fives. Mm -hmm. We love the five. We, the five rep set, whether it was Kirk, whether it was Finesse, whether whether it was Ed, uh, whether it was Cassidy, every power trainer that I knew, they loved the five because it was the best combination between the the, the super low rep pure strength and the, the higher rep hypertrophy. So that you know, getting really good at the five for the middle four weeks, that was like that's what everybody did. How people handled the last four weeks was different. Ed never liked to go to a single. Uh, I thought singles were a learned art. I like singles. I thought they were different. Chalet took singles to a high art. That's all he did. That's all he did. Yeah. Yeah. That's that is all he did. And, and, you know, it was amazing. And he set world records. And his philosophy yeah. was because that's how you compete. You do one rep, so that's how he's going to train. That's right? Almost identical to the Bulgarian, the very sophisticated Bulgarian Olympic lift philosophy. The difference, of course, was is that, you know, Mark would, like, train every other week, and the Bulgarians would train seven times a day. Right. Right. So the the frequency was was different. Yeah. But that but, looked a lot harder on your body. Well, yeah. because you're handling the poundage is yeah. so. I mean, Olympic lifters are doing what forty, fifty, sixty percent of what a right. power. Right. Well, they're not lowering the weight slowly most of the time either. They have no Jimmy. They throw away the negative. Yeah. yeah. There's no negative, and there's no negative in Olympic lifting. Right. Purposely. Well, where's the growth? What's something else, too, is the amount of muscularity that Chalet was able to build on oh one rep. Oh, know. yeah. He was, oh, no, he but was, in the off-season, he wasn't doing that. Nothing. He was eating ice cream sandwiches and <laughs> doing the tanning bed. How long would he take off from training in the off-season? As long as possible. Months? Yeah, Man. obviously, right? Well, he would have two. Basically, if you're a top-level guy, you're going to have two competitions a year. You're going to have the Nationals and the, and the Worlds. Although, if you don't make the world team, reason the way it goes is you take a, a local competition, and he had his meet, the uh, Temple Hills Open, which I think ran for 15 years. So he put that on, and he would lift in it. Well, that would be give him the qualifying total that he would need to go to the nationals. Now, if he made the world team, then you know he'd have to get into that cycle. But the worlds were always six months after the nationals. So you have plenty of time to detune and then get back into the swing of it. So we did that. I think Mark went to the Nationals and Worlds like, I don't know, six, six years in a row. I mean, he was a heavy hitter uh, in, his, and, um, in his class in the 242 and the 275s and the heavyweights. And, he was in three classes. He was bad news. And we've talked about, you know, when you take off some time like that, muscles – generally lose strength at a very slow rate. Now, I think that is, uh, I think genetics play a, a big part in that too, because I can tell you if I took a couple of months off, I'd be weak as hell. So I think guys at this level have, um, you know, I think that works in their favor a lot more because I, I think just genetically they're, they get stronger and it's, it's, uh, it's slower to, yeah. to actually leave the muscle. But, JP, you're not going into your off-season with a 900 deadlift. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. you, you're maybe 50% of that, right? Yeah. So everything's smaller. All your percentages are smaller. 
Mark wouldn't do jack, and he'd come into the beginning of the cycle. He'd be small. He'd be weighing like a doughy 254, 255, right? Mm-hmm. And then he'd, you know, <clears throat> get back on, you know, into the swing of things and start eating right and start paying attention. And, you know, all of a sudden everyone's looking at him and, oh, here come the Nationals or, or, or the Temple Hills Open. He's, the, you know, he's expected to kick ass. Everybody's, you know, by the end of the 12 weeks, it becomes like, uh, you know, a scene from Lord of the Flies, you know, <laughs> it's everything but bonfires. Yeah. In those final training sessions. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's craziness. One thing I want to ask about the periodization is, you know, this is... I thought we were talking about goals. Weren't we going to talk about goals? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, and that kind of comes into what I'm asking here. Um, (laughs) What, um, now this is serious business. I mean, a 12-week cycle, you got to hit your lifts. It's all documented. You, You log it. What if a guy misses that rep on a squat or whatever? Now, I think most of the time they hit it. You know, you're dealing with professionals and guys that have done this for a while. No, no we, we call it recasting the cycle. Yeah, so what do you let's do? Say, yeah, well, you recast the cycle. What you do is you say, okay, let's say uh, you're uh, four weeks out, right, and he's supposed to hit uh, whatever, 400 for five. Yeah. You're with me? Well, it doesn't work that way. He struggles. He gets 400 for three, barely. Uh, but there's some circumstances, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But there's no way the next week he's going to hit the 415 for five that he's supposed to hit. Yeah. What do you do? Just adjust well, the numbers. You drop back. And however many weeks you got left, I might go in a case like that. I got, might go, hey, you know what? Next week, we're just going to do 385 for a triple. Really snappy. What do you think? And you're like, oh, really? You, you, you know what I mean? And just get some mm-hmm. momentum back. Right. But I wouldn't have a problem with that. But not most guys are able to be that, uh, you know, they don't have that knowledge. What would yes. you do, Jim? Um, well, I would first find out, you know, like if there's extenuating circumstances, if he hasn't, didn't have a, you know, but, he had a well, assume, assume there are, right. So if there are, then I'd say, okay, four or five for five next week. I want you to have a great week of rest and nutrition. You know, we're going to solve all the problems that you had, you know, but you got to have a conversation with the guy and be like, you know, do you have that in you? Seriously, tell me, you know, cause if not, we can still get to where we need to, to be and just back off a little bit. You know, but if you can crush this weight, you got to tell me. You know, and if he's, a, if he's an honest lifter, he'll tell you, like, no, nah, coach, I don't have it for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> okay, good. Now we're going to do the 385 for five. You know, we, uh, or would you drop it back at even more? I mean, what what would you do? You know, he's he's tapped out, but you've still got three more. You've got three more sessions than the competition. You know. Uh, you know, you, you got to do something to keep the momentum going. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I would, uh, I would not worry if I had to back out, back off. If you want, I wouldn't to, either. I, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Gain some confidence, and uh, you know, and, man, and manhandle it. And manhandle it. Yeah, because don't you know, struggle. Don't really struggle. Good. You don't want to struggle the last workouts. My my last squat. I came off a 775 single in training, never aged, and did 820. Wow. Wow. Hold on. Hold on. 775. So almost a 45-pound bump. Yeah. Wow. What do you attribute that to? Psych? Uh, Just being psyched up? Yeah, I I experienced. So from doing meets, knowing that I could train on 775 from 1 to 820? 820. I'd never squatted over 800 before I did it in a meet. Yeah. What then, body weight was that, Jim? What body weight? 268. That's good. Damn, you're well, a beast, I mean, you're considering you're tall. Oh, yeah, 5'9". <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, no. Yeah. No, I was, anyway, I, I always like that philosophy. I mean, at some point during their year, the, the lifter had to challenge himself and yeah. you know, be at around 100. But before competition, man, remember, you're squatting heavy, you're deadlifting heavy. If, if the guy has any mental strength, he can make a jump. 
you know. But really. most don't. Most choke when they go to competitions. They do less in competition than what they do in training. That is typical. Yeah. They're not I'm, gamers. I'm just telling you. Yeah, no, I know. You know? And a lot of that has to do uh, with the way that they break the lifts apart. Uh, it's it's hard to equal your best training deadlift when you deadlift on a different day than when you squat. But in the yeah. power competition, you have to deadlift after you squat. Yeah. So around six weeks out, I would switch them to the same day. Smart. Yeah. Right. Talk about specialization. So Marty, as yeah. Marty is uh, Kirk Kowalski's coach. Did you ever have this scenario with him where you... No, no one coaches Kirk. We only advise him. Well, you guided him. <laughs> no, no, don't you say made that. You suggestions. I could, be, I could be arrested. <laughs> Did he ever have this scenario? Did he ever Did have you know this what? scenario where he missed a rep? Because, yeah. I mean... Early on, you bet, all the time. Well, you should have filmed oh, that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it took I us 10 imagine. years to, to get him... Right. Straightened but, out. But I mean, as he got further down the road, did, did he have a situation? Because I'm just curious how he dealt with that. Because he's, you know, he's he got kind of better and better each year. And he dedicated his entire life to powerlifting. That helps. He, he did indeed. Yeah. He, he lived in a, he had a nice little apartment, a great union job. Uh, he had no female, uh, you know, he dated heavily, but he was not, uh, you know what I mean? With anybody, nothing, nothing was distracting him. He would nothing let was distracting him. His his job was great. He worked like four and a half days, and then he got off uh, like plenty of time. So he would, you know, he had great and and every day at four four thirty he was done. Uh, so it was it, he he stayed in that group for ten straight years, and each year, each cycle. He would miss fewer and fewer and fewer, but his technique would tighten up too. He changed his entire technique. You look at the technique at the beginning of his career compared to at the end of his career, he was a different dude. And yeah. because of that, he had a different physique. Jim, let's talk about uh, the bodybuilding side of things. You're a bodybuilder. You're a competitive bodybuilder. Um, certainly, you set goals and 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 plan yeah you know your training your dieting your your cardio everything talk a little bit about what what it, what's entailed with that and how it kind of differs from what you do with powerlifting because you're a, com a competitive powerlifter as well yeah i used to be <laughs> um yeah. the uh well, the powerlifting stuff, you don't, you know, with bodybuilding, diet is 1,000% of the whole thing when you're training for a competition. Right. And, and powerlifting, all I worried about was getting my protein in. If I got that in, I ate whatever I wanted. Yeah. Uh, now, now, if you got to make weight, that's different, but I didn't, I didn't care about that. And then I don't care at all about the weights that I lift training for a bodybuilding show. I really don't. Now, I used to. And I didn't have as much muscle when I lifted like that. And then I... Because uh, you hurt yourself, right? What's that? You hurt yourself. Well, you can. That's yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to. I mean, if you do that, if you starve and then train heavy, you're headed for the uh, wall. Yeah. Well, so what, what? Even more, you know, with the time under tension being so important, that's what I really worry about. And I worry about, you know, when I'm doing a squat, I'm not thinking I'm putting my mind into my quads. Right. When I'm doing hack squats for bodybuilding, I'm putting my mind into my quad. And, and, and the longer you can extend that set. Right. The more beneficial for your purposes. Right. So on Sunday was my leg day. I did 10 sets of 20 on a hack squat. Ooh, gruesome. That's for bodybuilding stuff on powerlifting. I was and, and ass on heels. Two to five. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. How did your uh, how did your how did, how did you walk? Did you do anything else? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't do anything else. I only do a squatting motion, and that's it. Did you do any calves? Yeah, I do those tomorrow. That's arm day. I'll do arms, and then in between sets of my arms, I'll do calves. Uh, how what would, do you do for calves? Stand, standing. I always did donkeys, but this gym doesn't have a donkey, so I have a standing. Mm, how how much weight do you use? 
Not much, man. Yeah. I swear, this lady went on before me and used more weight because I stretch at the bottom. Yeah, you get the huge I stretch and the relax and, <laughs> yes. and, and all the way up, all the way up, further, 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 yeah. higher, higher, right? Right. It, and then you got to pause there. Yeah. Just a bunch of pausing. No you keep going and going and going and going and going and going until it burns so bad you can't walk. Anywhere Jim, ten and thirty. Okay, so how do you how do you alter your um, your rep range from off season going heavy bulking up to dieting getting close to a show? Um, why well, do you like I to do it? Sort of a different story because I sort of train the same way every eight, eight to twelve. 8 to 12 reps. 8 I mean, to 12 all year. Day, like the other day, but it's usually 8 to 12. Yeah. Um, on, every, on everything? Uh, always a little higher on legs. Usually just a little higher reps on legs. It depends. Uh, and then I'll do, you know, some drop sets once in a while where it goes into the 30, you know, range or some rest pause where it goes into like the <clears throat> range. How, how, how many days are you in the gym and for how long? Um, just the lifting. Bodybuilding wise, uh, well, yeah. Uh, all right. Do we want to? What do you want, JP? Do you want him when he's at the peak of his bodybuilding stuff? Well, yeah. Just basically, uh, you all know, right. train well, him, train him how, for a how, show. How many, yeah. Tell him how much time you're spending on the cardio and the lifting when you're yeah. in yeah. in yeah. at the end of the show thing. Yeah. So cardio towards the end, I was doing up to three hours on the recumbent bike, but uh, oh, three hours. Day. What? My workout, no matter what, <laughs> never takes more than 30 minutes. <laughs> With the weights, never. I've never. Now, powerlifting, I would squat. No, 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 not powerlifting. Okay, Just stick, okay. stick with the bodybuilding. 30 minutes at, at the what, most. Man. Okay, so what would you do? What would be like a, a bodybuilding day, 30 minutes? What would you do? Boom. Uh, um, I would do, uh, let's say I was doing back. Okay. I would off with a support row with dumbbells. Okay. Um, every how, many, how, many, how, many, how many set? Three sets of that to failure, usually around okay. eight. Usually around eight, some partials on the last set. Right, right. And then uh, some type of lap pull. I like the hammer, hammer lap pull. Hammer uh, lap pull. Is that a machine? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a machine. Okay. Three sets of eight to failure on every set on that. And sometimes okay. nine or eleven, but you know. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You're yeah. eight, but you're pay, you're keeping a pace here, right? Uh, Thirty seconds. Thirty to forty seconds. Boom. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not, if, I, if I'm know that, Hey, I'm not going to get even close to eight. If I don't take a minute, I'll take a minute, but yeah. you know, I have what's, a, what's I, next one arm rows. I always do one arm rows no matter what uh, with the dumbbells with the dumbbells. And I pull really low to the hip, really mm -hmm. towards the glute almost. Um, and again, what's the reps? I, I would say eight. Okay. 12 at the most 12 at the most. Right. Uh, I'm just thinking what I did the other day. It was, uh, you probably, you probably start with 12 and end at 8, right? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I'll say, well, I know I can do 12 with that, but I won't be able to get 12 on all sets. So I'll just do that first set of 12, and then the next set will be like 10 and then 8, something like that, with the same weight. Right. Yeah. Then I go to another machine. You know, I do 15. I would do 15 total sets. Jim, as you get close to that show, I mean, you're yeah. basically, your diet is down to, what, chicken breasts and water or whatever. Uh, tilapia and, and uh, cabbage, uh, and coffee, it, water. It, every everybody has a favorite protein. Yeah, I right. start off with beef and then switch to tilapia. You so, you know what I heard? You know what uh, Kevin Lebron once told me his was what? Hmm. I believe he, now. I believe the numbers right. I believe he's eating six pounds of flounder a day. Wow! Right. I mean, that's a good, I mean, if you got to eat a protein, that's yeah, pretty man. damn good that's pretty protein good. to eat pretty good, you know? Yeah. So I uh, believe that, that that's, that's yeah. what he was doing, that with like, mm, I don't know, asparagus and, you know, uh, basmati rice. Right, right, yeah. He, so, he would grow into a show. So, Jim, were you, were you weighing all your food? Were you, like, really calculating the grams of protein uh, based uh, on your body weight and that, all that? Uh, what I did, I did when I my last show at five weeks out uh, when I ditched the ground beef pretty much then I started I was curious on where I was calorie wise and uh, and then I sort of knew where I needed to be to keep tell, tell them where you were buddy 942 no but that's I mean t 
Okay, 942 in regular food all together. And then I took MCT. I take uh, probably four or five tablespoons a day. Which is what, five, 600, 800 calories? Right, but it can't be burnt, you know, it can't be stored as fat. No, so. I'm just saying, but, but total, See, add them together, and you're at uh, 1,500. And tons of caffeine, yeah. And you're doing three hours a day of cardio in 30 minutes. How many days a week of lifting? Six days a week, probably? Uh, five, five. Five days a week of lifting. Every day cardio, right? Oh, yeah. You yeah, do yeah every day. Yeah. You wake up and you do what is that, an hour? An hour. You get an hour right in, right away. Yeah, as soon as you wake up, do an hour of stupid ass cardio. Well, what do you do? Why don't you just kill yourself? I don't get it. I mean, and, uh, I, then I like so horrible. How do you how do you distract yourself when you're well, riding movies, in a combat bike? Movies. I, I listen to music like this okay. thing. I did 45 minutes and I listened to Suffocation. Okay. Um, uh, you know the death metal band, and I watched uh, fights on YouTube. Same okay. Time. Cool. Okay. Same. All right. So so you're making time. You're uh, uh you're you're double tracking. Yeah. It's so tracking. Be- before the show, like maybe a week out or whatever, you're at what uh, total gym time a day? Is it four or five hours because you're doing so much cardio? Yeah, three and a half, four. Yep. Now, yeah. what about your strength, your strength levels? Is it just... He, he has none. Yeah. Is it just I, demolished I at that point? He's able, to, he's able to walk. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, basically. Like, you know, you're... So, like, for instance, when I was powerlifting and, and doing bent over rows, I did 585 for like a triple or a double or something like that. Excellent. The uh, Yesterday, I used 185. What, what, what did you weigh? What did you weigh? Oh, I was 312 then. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, so it didn't have to, my belly was so big, it didn't have to move too far. Well, I'm but, saying, it was, I, I was just about to say it, that will shorten your rep strip. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, like yesterday was my last exercise, and I used 185, and I would have... Yeah, oh, and, 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 yeah. Nothing. But but you're letting it dead hang. Exactly. Right, and you're pulling you pull it up to your chest and you hold it up there before you let it back down. You know what I mean? And you change it and you're altering your grip. Yeah. With, yeah right. A closer grip when I'm when I'm worried about. Or well, find out where you're a pussy and go to that grip. You know, I mean, where, wherever you're weak. Yeah. Go to that right because that's that's where the gains are. Everybody keeps playing to their damn strengths. Right. right? No, that's totally right. Right, right, right. And particularly in bodybuilding. Yeah, and what bodybuilding really does is it teaches you that uh, nutrition. <laughs> After I did my first show in high school, I couldn't <laughs> believe what a role nutrition played in everything you do. That's when I first started really thinking about that stuff. You know, yeah. it's 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 everything. Yeah. In, in that world, it's everything, right? I mean, you can tell if I went. Well, no, nah, it's not because you know no one cares about seeing a ripped fourteen-inch arm. No, no, you're right. Oh, you got to be able to chisel something, but you know, and, and <laughs> certain body types like Kevin would grow into a show. He'd start off at two twenty and end up at two sixty-five. I start, Kirk, I start uh, at two forty-five. Uh, Kirk, and Kirk was a little like that, and Chile was definitely like that. They would start yeah, off small and man, weak. That's a huge metamorphic uh, trait. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. But, I mean, you're kind of like that, too, right? I get heavy, you know. I get heavy sometimes. Do I get... you? <clears throat> now, uh, okay, but, but, but finish, finish us out on this. Now, when you're yeah. done, I mean, that is extreme. Also... You know, you talk about what bodybuilding is. I think bodybuilding is about willpower, yeah, and discipline, yeah, and adherence, yeah, and it's all these mental traits. And if you don't have your mental house together, forget it. Yeah. Okay. No, because just, because really, ultimately, Jimmy, isn't it about? I mean, you starve your ass off. You train your ass off. Am I leaving anything out? I don't know. Uh, what it is, is it, you're forcing your body to do something that it has no, it, it, it doesn't want to do at all. It, it, there's no way you want to train on 900 calories. Your body's like, what are you talking about? You're supposed to hibernate. Sit here. Are, no. we, in a, are we in a Siberian gulag during yeah. the Stalin regime? Your body wants to not burn any calories because it wants to keep you alive. And you're making it you know, the exact opposite, you know, burn a lot of calories. And if, if you adhere, if you adhere, and if you have the will, and if you can power through for three, four w- weeks, 
it will work. You will lose. You will lose body fat. Somebody yeah, and there's a point. There's a point where you wake up and you go, "Whoa, what the hell is that? I didn't see that yesterday, or you know, I didn't see any of this yesterday." How, how is your energy? Oh, zero. Dude, zero. You got nothing. I mean, no. the last five weeks, you got nothing because there's no more cheat day. This is just the way I have done it. And Rich Sulky, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, we love Rich. Oh, he, 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 talk about Rich a little bit. He's, well, he's a friend Rich was president for my father at the University of Maryland back in the '80s. Doctor Rich. He was the biggest body. My dad was a professor at the University of Maryland, and Rich was the biggest name in the Washington D.C. metropolitan area, Baltimore. Deservedly, as far as amateur bodybuilders, man, he was the yep. stuff. Looked like Tim Belknap, the old yep. Mister of America, huge forearms. And yep. So I had this. I had this. Uh, I knew Rich at Chalets. Right. He used to come in the Chalets. Yeah. But, uh, uh-huh. uh, you know, I called him on a whim. I was in like tenth grade and asked him questions about amino acids and oatmeal and all this stuff and he was really cool and we kept in touch so every time I would diet down for something I'd get in touch with Rich Sulky and uh And Rich is Rich has been there. Oh yeah man. Well yeah. They they had to carry him off the stage at one Mr. America. <laughs> yeah. He would take everything to the extreme. Yeah, oh. he's an extreme guy, man. I really like that. Let me tell you one tiny Rich story and you keep going here. Rich told me, he said, you know, he said, Marty, he said, Marty, the thing I hate the most about the dieting is that at the very end, he said, when you walk, you have no fat on the bottoms of your feet and your bones hurt like hell when you step on the floor. They yeah, send pain up to your body because yeah. you you've eliminated the fat off the bottom of the soles of your feet. I'm like, oh, my God, I hope I never experienced that. <laughs> yeah, he would get ripped, r- really ripped up. <sighs> Did uh, hey Jim? Did uh, the MCT oil help you much with uh, your energy there at the end? I think so. And I remember we talked a little bit about this at Virginia Beach, and we were all together. And I yeah. think so. I, I've never been able to concentrate when I've been that that much in a calorie deficit before. Mm-hmm. But this time with the MCT, I was able to write, and I wrote coherently. I wrote every day, pretty much. Yeah. Um, I was able to focus on reading. I usually would just have to go to magazines, fluff magazines. Right. Uh, now I could actually read a, a novel. And it just showed me that cognitively um, I was a little sharper than I usually am. And, and I think my calories were even lower than they, than they have been. Well, um, there's there's studies that show that. And there's actually, uh, I think there's evidence to show that uh, MCTs help fight um, uh, dementia. Yeah. Alzheimer's, yep. yep. And, and, and it's 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 pretty legitimate. Yeah. Uh, you need a good source of MCTs. I think MCTs, I mean, and again, they're natural and legal and, you know, so why the hell not? And it's another thing that bodybuilders brought to the forefront. I mean, really think about yeah, it. Man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Perilla has been pushing MCTs since the eighties. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that too. Said, oh, you're crazy. Who wants to take a Fat is a supplement. You're nuts. Yeah, right. I not took it years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I took it well, in the eighties. Because that, that's because Rich really knows what he's talking about, and he walks the walk, and he's done it. And yeah. again, Jimmy, in the end, doesn't it come down to starving and training? It does. And you, and and you know, uh, normal people don't want to hear that. Okay, no, they no. they don't want the truth of it, and unfortunately, if you want to get ripped, you're probably going to have to starve. There's no, I mean, unless you're, yeah, I know Dorian Yates survives in 3,500 calories coming into the Olympia, but he's eating 800, right. uh, he's eating 8,000 in the off season, yeah, and he's weighing 300. Yeah, no, he was he was hungry. There's no question, he was hungry, and he had cheekbones. You could see him. You know, oh, um, people get if if you haven't got your copy, get a copy of Blood and Guts. That's great. Single greatest bodybuilding training video ever made. Yeah. Fewest words ever said. It was film noir, perfect. You know, if you want to learn any everything about bodybuilding, look at that. It's, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the, got the some, intensity. The, you got the, some great the, video on there. Marty, you like it because they don't talk. You go, see, they just scream and well, yell yeah. and lift, and that's all I want to see. 
That's the way we did it. I mean, we were going to talk about what? Yeah, we didn't sit around and talk and do this weekend. Come on, man. Yeah, we didn't sit around and do selfies. We got to it. Yeah, well, uh, especially if you got seven fifty on the bar next, so you yeah. better get your get yeah. your mind together, brother. You got a selfie with that? You're gonna. Or are you going to talk about how the Redskins are going to do? We're going to have, have a for catastrophic dinner? situation. Come on, man. Come hey, on, Jim. Man. You know, hey, hey what? Just, just for a second here. Let's now. He's got to go uh, pick up Ricardo. No, let's talk about uh, the athletic approach real quick. Now, as the, the head strength and conditioning coach at uh, University of Pennsylvania, I mean, you were training these kids to get strong and gain weight for different sports, um, you know, uh, football and did you train all the, the, the kids that were playing all the different sports, or did you? I had one pointer at one time. I never had fencing, thank God. But uh, You didn't have fencing. I like, I like fencing. So I you were training them for all the different sports? Yeah. Okay. So what can you add to the conversation about getting them ready, goal setting and, and all that? I imagine they had different goals in the off season, and then. Uh, so we, so uh, differently with with. So if a team had a big uh, subculture uh, or culture of lifting, like the kids mm-hmm. knew about lifting, if they played a sport where lifting was a part of it, like yeah. football, uh, then you have different clubs. You have a 500-pound squat <laughs> club. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you have. I always had a power lifting competition. Oh, uh, so incentive. Uh, we would peak for yeah. So we would set incentives. We would set goals for that competition. Yeah, I always uh, try to get those guys incentivized. Uh, little goals. Competing yeah. because they're competitors. All of a sudden, they get to their big goal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I did that on an individual basis with the kids. And then, you know, I would say, you know, and and, and we change them as they went. You know, if a kid would get stronger than he thought he was going to get, we said, okay, we're going to re- revise your your competition goal. And then we'd have a big competition, man. Um, and and so you could deadlift or clean, but okay. you had hot and bench. Um, say, and then, okay, now now what were the uh, lifts again? Deadlift, clean, squat, and bench. And oh, okay, good. Deadlift, clean, squat. Yeah, so if you nice. elbow thing or shoulder thing or wrist thing with other good deadlift. Um, but if not, I expected you to clean, and everybody benched and everybody squatted. You know, I and had you said, Kirk, just, listen to this, listen to this. So I had Kirk come in, right? <laughs> and so, like a week, a week before the competition, I'm like, hey, man. I call him on the phone. I'm like, you're going to, you're going to come and be a guest lifter for me. The kids all know who you are because I used to play his films while guys were lifting. I'd put them on the big screen and he'd do a thousand <laughs> two and all. You nice. Son of maestro. Well, yeah. I mean, I just, you know, I was always thinking what would get me fired up and that would get me fired up. But anyway, so. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Into him a, a week before the, and I'm, he goes, yeah, no problem, man. I'll come stay with you, whatever. And I'm like, great. Is he in shape? He, I didn't realize he had had a little bit to drink that night. What? Is that? Oh. Kirk? No way. He w- he wouldn't do that. He remembered to come to the university. But he remembered that, right? Good. He remember that he was supposed to lift. So uh-huh. a couple of the wide receivers who were really into lifting, really into lifting, come in and they're all <laughs> meet him and all this shit. And he's super cool. And they're like, well, what are you gonna what are you gonna lift tonight for us? And he goes, lift. <laughs> And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I was like, "Yeah, man, I've already remember to the whole team. They're all expecting you to lift, man. Oh man, well, I'm not ready to do that. He had, all he brought was his shorts and a t-shirt and a shirt. I mean, just what he had on. And I think he had a members only jacket or something. Oh, so, then, so he goes out there, and I don't think he'd squatted in a couple months. And so I got 120 people around. And I found oh, no. that part. So he takes out 500. He takes out enough <laughs> sneakers, right? And I'm like, please, please. So the weights. So it's a it's it's an Olympic lifting bar and a power bar. It's so like <laughs> between because the kids do Olympic lifts. I need a little whip in the bar. Right. So he's standing there, and that bar is shaking. He's shaking. That bar is like <laughs> a slinky man. And I'm like, oh shit, crushed it. He crushed five reps like it was like he could have done 50. I know. Any warm up? <laughs> I was he warmed up a little bit, yeah, but and, and but he can't get down with one thirty five or two twenty. No, no that's what he said. Start with three fifteen. He's bitching, uh, bitching, uh, bitching, 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 bitching. I had, bitching, I had bitching. and Rob Wagner judging the squat. 
<laughs> Two world champions. It was it was great. Uh, well, you know, Kirk lifted with us on Sunday. Oh, he did. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing great. Uh, he's yeah. uh, he's using a um, uh, I don't know, like the I want to call it the Hatfield bar. What's the bar? You know that you safety squat bar. Yeah, yeah safety squat squat bar. And and uh, he what did he work up to? I think he worked up to five oh five. Wow. One no Sunday, kidding, and he. Huh? Ass on heels to reps, and he just shot it up and shot it up and shot it up and shot. And I'm looking at that, and I go, uh, Don, do you still have that uh, velocity meter? Yeah. He's got some sort of thing you hook onto the end of the barbell. Endo unit, yeah. And we did this once before with him, and like every lifter in the gym, and we have some pretty good lifters, and like they're squatting at, you know, I'm just going to pick a number, I don't know. I'm going to say they were squatting at a, Point five. Well, he was squatting at a point nine in terms of velocity, right? Yeah. He, he's just got this. When he hits the turnaround, he's got this boom, you have this spring thing going, right? And, and it's a conscious, learned thing for him. It's, yeah, we, uh, and I put it into his head. We, you know, that is Fred Hatfield's yeah. compensatory acceleration. The whole thing about okay, when it's time to go, Kirk, we fucking yeah, you know, move, move all weights fast. Yeah, but it's all about it, it's the atomic explosion at the turnaround. Yeah. Okay, you've got to have that. Then that's everything that creates the upward momentum, and it takes. You know, I mean, it took took ten years to yeah. to, to yeah. master that. That's right. Well, okay. That's okay. It well, he years. hasn't. Okay, it takes ten no. years. So what? Like he maybe, mastered it. Now he has it. Be, to be a good anything, 10 years. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but this is 10 years after he put in 20 years as, you know, like an apprentice and an intermediate. Oh, shit. And then 10. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, this, I mean, I mean, he just, it was just, it's so inspiring. And he has it on the deadlift, too, because it's like, uh, what is he doing, Jimmy? He's in the deadlift, he's opening his hip hinge, mm-hmm. right? He like, he like has to pull himself down. It's hard for him to get to the barbell because he's so big and his legs are big and everything's big and he gets and he grabs it and then he just go bang. Right? Yeah. And it just explodes the rocket and he's just opening that hip hinge and it's so easy for him because he's so strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got those giant ass legs and those giant ass arms. He's like Mr. Limbs. <laughs> right? He's the greatest limbs. His arms are incredible. His legs incredible, right? He's like uh, Mike Matarazzo or Mike Quinn. <laughs> Blast in the past. Well, I'm just saying, you know, kind of torso deficient. Yeah. Guy with great, you know, great arms and legs. Mike Matarazzo appeared on, he appeared on more covers of muscle and fitness and flex in the 90s than any other bodybuilder. It wasn't him. It was his face and his arms or his legs and or his calves. You know the top two? Who do you think the top two cover men of all time on muscle and fitness are? All time. Oh, interesting. I w- uh, you know, I would go with Arnold. Right. You got that, number one. Number uh, two. I don't know. Maybe is, is it going to be a... Is it a... a How about Lee Haney? No, Lee Haney? Not a pro bodybuilder. Not a pro yeah, bodybuilder. Joe, uh, not a pro bodybuilder. Gastineau. Uh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. What'd you whoa. say, JP? Gastineau. No. No, 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 no. What's my buddy from the West Coast, the good-looking model boy? Yeah. Chuck yeah. Norris. No, no, Mike. What's Mike with? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Who? I, he's a friend of mine. Mike, oh, Mike what's O'Hearn. His name? Mike O'Hearn. Mike oh, O'Hearn, yeah, O'Hearn, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike went on. He was on uh, with the Gladiator show. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. he's strong, man. He's strong. He's still lifting heavy, heavy, heavy. Yeah. And Mike, Mike was. Uh, do you know that Mike was the California Judo champion? No, but he's done a lot. Oh yeah, he had a good martial arts background for serious. He went in against. He's trained under the Machados. So is he natural? Oh no. Oh, come on. Everybody says he said he is. Well, oh, yeah, Mike, he oh, you, he know what? you know what? You know what, Mike? That's right. Natural Mike. You know, I believe him. Okay. Michael always had his thing. Well, was we've all been around freaks. We've all been around crazy. Freaks. Yeah, I don't know if he's a freak. I mean, he's all right. I mean, he's okay. Well built. I mean, he's not he doesn't 
scare me or impress me or anything. And I've, I've met him. We've hung out with him. Uh, Stacy and I have hung out and party with him and one of his model wives. He has a bunch of these girlfriends he continually has with him. And they're all like I super think married now, super made up Hollywood yeah. babes with giant eyelashes. And we go to like Spago and places like that. And nice. Oh, yeah, 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 Mike and Ori Hoffmackler. He's another one of my West Coast L.A. But, well, you know, uh, anyway. Oh, that's right. You know, we're live. We're getting, off, talk- we're getting off topic here. What, what's a, so, <laughs> I think so, I wait talk a to you guys in the living room, right? So, wait a minute. So Jimmy, stop me. Stop Jim me was, when I get Jim was talking about the element <laughs> of, of uh, competing that, that he would add to uh, for his um, – athletic training oh yeah one quick question i had though on that um okay so that's one of the reasons that crossfit is is so popular (laughs) you know they compete it's like a family they compete against one another and and help each other and and all that so you kind of insert that that. into this yeah Yeah. that's the way everybody all the gyms used to be that's right Right. you know what that's right buddy to this one everybody's going everybody if you're not competing you're going anyway um, so, you know, just support, cook just out. Support. Right. Support. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, you know, we're still doing that. You so, are at Donald Blake Berry's. Yeah, that's right. You've been up there, buddy. You know what the country gym oh, looks like. That. So, Marty, well, quick you. question. Quick Don't question be about the, it's the mountains. Quick question about the competitive element to this. Transition over now to powerlifting. Did you guys do much of that, or was it just about the twelve weeks and hitting? you know, each lift each week, and it was more of a you're on your own island sort of thing. Well, we trained, I mean, we weren't just power lifters. We were also athletes. I mean, you know, everybody played sports. Everybody was a serious athlete who did other things. Strength training was one of the many things we did. So everybody was lean and tight and athletic and functional, you know, and that's just part of, part of my generation when I came up, mm. uh, you know, again, if you're peaking for something, if you, whether it's a training camp or whether it's a strength competition, whatever it is, you, you need to get regimented. Right. Right. Yeah. You've got to put a plan to paper or on computer or somewhere, somehow here's where I am now. All right. Where do I realistically want to get? Now, here's where people get in trouble because they go, well, you know what? I uh, I can bench 250 with a pole. So, you know what? In this competition, I think I want to bench 325. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know what? You're insane. Yeah. You know, you're just crashing into the wall, dude. If you're benching 250, if you get 270 out of this, that's going to be good. Yeah. Right? In the bench. Right. Right. I would expect more in the squat and the deadlift. I'd like a fifty pound I'd like a fifty pound bump for my guys in the squat and the dead. But if you're starting aiming at fifty pounds ahead of where you were at, if you back that up twelve weeks, even if you just go ten pounds a week in the squat and the dead, five pounds a week in the bench, okay? Well, that means 120 pounds working front to back in the squat in the dead and 60 pounds in the bench. So if you work that backwards, you know, realistically want to end up at what, uh, you know, 5 to 10 percent above. Jim, do you think that's realistic? Yeah, and it depends on how... uh how far along the lifter is, man. If you get, a, you know, if you got, if you got a bunch of weight out of Kirk in the twelve week cycle, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's that's big. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, no, I'm now I'm not. I'm talking about the regular dude. I mean, yeah. the kind of guys you you run into in your, you know, Plus, in your line of work. You got to go back all kind. You know, you got to go over to pause and don't lose attention, and but you got to pause. You know, the whole thing. Yeah. And it, the competition lifting, because I'm. You know, I watch these guys on the internet, and they never lock their knees out when they deadlift. Try doing that. 
Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, and there were. I mean, uh, it's a, it's an abomination. Right, but that's what I'm saying. So then you got to go back and say, well, you know, that's a good. <clears throat> this, but that's not going to be a USAPL squad. So we got to work on your depth now. You know, the deadlift. Yeah, your depth sucks, dude. You know, your depth sucks. Your your deadlifts are not locked out, and you oh, don't know yeah. shit. So let's get right. serious. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. that's why gaining gaining a lot of strength would be great because the technique and the strictness of the judges is so different than just doing your gym lifts. I don't give a shit what anybody did in the gym. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. The strictness of the lifts in training is what gets them big and strong. Right. Right. You know, right. let's right. don't make them easier. Let's make the lifts harder. Right. Right. right? And that way, when they go into a competition, it's like, well, this is like cheating. This is easy. This is like so, wow, this is incredible. And that's the way our lifters go into competition. Everybody else, they can't match their training lifts. Yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Again, it's a a whole mindset. That's that's a thing, too. You know, you go in any gym, and I see it at my gym, um, and if if you surf Instagram or whatever, you see it, it's like an epidemic. Everybody's trying to make things easier. It's all about, you know, half reps, quarter reps, devices, yeah. all this stuff yeah. that's, you know. That's exactly right. You know, why do that? Thing. That's not that's not real strength. It's uh, fake no. strength. And, and, and that's why the current crop can't hold a candle to the to the guys in the 70s and the 80s and the right. 90s in terms of physiques would you second that emotion jim i'm talking about the builds on guys like joe latineer and jim cash and cone and kirk i mean those physiques and and for Ness, those guys were rocked out yeah. no you're right and i always thought when kirk went down to 242 it could have oh, been maryland God. at the same time oh he could have uh yeah he was incredible uh, and, and he was just one of many, and that's because back then they bore the weight, and it was the epitome. And it's so ironic for me that there's so much traction for all the, like, you know, the Russian methods or all these other methods, that there was a very cohesive American method that produced, you know, the, you know, all the way back to the Cassidy's, the Cucks, the Williams, and to the Doug Youngs on up into the, you know, Dennis Wrights and Doug Furness and Ed Cones, and it kept on going to, you know, and it was about 20 years of guys who all trained the same damn way. And we crushed everybody in the world. And honestly, uh, when you go back to if you're going to do raw lifts with have like below parallel in the squat, paused in the bench, locked out in the deadlift, they can't match those guys. Those guys were muscled up damn monsters. Well, I'm trying to think. Was there any fat guys? No, because if fat guys lost. So right? Think about it. Think about the, even the, the fat guys, guys lost. The fat yeah. guys got their asses kicked. Oh, that was Kazmaier and those guys. They were all rocked up. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right, buddy. Because you had to be hard in your weight class. Because if you weren't, if you were soft in your weight class, you got crushed. And that's well, just but, the way it was. But think and about were, it. So, so it's not the drugs because drugs have been around forever and they're still around. And they were. But, and back then it was it was drugstore bullshit. Right. There's no sophistication no yeah. to it. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so that's that's an equalizer. So that's not it. So what was the difference? Why was everybody so much more? It, was, it had to be hard, hard training. No, uh, there was no monoliths. There was no shallow squats. There was no, uh, everybody had to pause their benches because in competitions, when the, the power lift competition was first in, uh, installed in 1965, there was a two second pause in the bench press for three years. Oh. Oh, yeah, right. Jim Williams benched 675 with a two-second pause. Cassidy benched 570 with a two-second pause. Wow. Josh Young benched 620 with a two-second pause. Mike Bridges, uh, oh, you know, at 181, he, he, all these guys, Mike McDonald benched 600 weighing 230. 
with the t <laughs> in a t-shirt in a t-shirt yeah yeah all those guys yeah the bench shirt wasn't invented until yeah. uh late 70s so Taz probably would have got 700 if he didn't tear his pack <laughs> exactly oh he would he would have he would have destroyed had he he also was very distracted. He wanted to go into football. He wanted to go into wrestling. He wanted to go somewhere he was going to make some money. Yeah, I don't blame him. So. I don't blame him either. And he was a talent, and a lot of people were encouraging him, but he was very distracted. If he had stayed totally um, focused on powerlifting, yeah. I think I think he could have pushed his body weight to a solid 360 and squatted an easy below parallel of thousand, certainly bench pressed raw seven fifty and deadlift he he deadlifted eight eighty seven, so I'm thinking nine fifty. Yeah. Oh. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's in a, I'm talking that, I'm talking nineteen eighty. Yeah, you know, let, let's say you're just fifty pounds off. He's still breaking every record that they I, 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 I think I'm very conservative. Wow! Yeah, he was a monster, man. If he put, if he, if he, all his all his best lifts were made at three twenty. Like Jim Cash looked like he could walk on the uh, you know a good uh, regional bodybuilding, you know, like the North Americans or something. He was, he was the United States Army wrestling champion at one sixty five. Yeah, yeah, and but their physiques were so dense. Well, because he went from one sixty five to two twenty all muscle. Uh, and he had all those wrestler habits. Uh, what was it? Name? SB? SB? Oh, Jim Estep. No, Roger. Estep. Roger Estep. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. I knew oh, Jim, I knew a Jimmy Estep who lived in my block. Right. Roger Estep was from West Virginia. Died early of brain cancer. He was a radio active, some sort of a. He was a genius radio actor active guy and he somehow caught brain cancer from his own work but he was a rocked out perfect technician i was reading his you know, like on saturdays he yep. would go in and they would deadlift for like five hours they would just, i mean yeah. not once you yeah. know just by the time they all he and his you know they had six guys yeah. there and maybe they front squatted first or something but then they deadlift i mean their workouts took forever man Yep. And then they then they go to the diner and everybody would order three dinners. Yeah. <laughs> and veal and take, cutlets. And, yeah, veal cutlets and take naps in their cars before they could drive home. Yeah. Those were the days. Yeah. How would we should wrap this thing up? Yeah. We've been rocking, right? Look at us. Well the, the the last thing I wanted to just ask real quick is, you know, how would the average guy get started? What's the best way for these guys to get started? Uh, lifting or you know power lifting or bodybuilding i mean mm. you know the problem any quick is, tips or, you mean i mean you got to find a coach you got to find yeah. somebody to teach you the proper technique right from the start so you don't get hurt and get discouraged yeah if that's you're the main proper thing technique, you can lift the rest of your life right yeah so, that's what marty and i always talk about you know he's you know he's, i think the youtube has helped a lot if you if you yeah. go to the right youtube you can learn yeah. a lot um, so, but Jim, let me ask you this question. If you had a, a good intermediate guy who, yeah, you know, knew the lifts, knew a little something, what would you prescribe for him to take him for where he is to where he wants to get to? Um, I would, would you put it in a time frame? You mean as far as? If he wants to compete and, and do all that, I don't know. I mean, what uh, you know, just just a guy who approaches you and hey, you're this expert strength coach. What yeah. would you advise? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. Have, I'm a yeah, serious yeah. guy. I don't compete necessarily. Right. Blah blah blah. But he wants to get stronger. I, you know, we yeah. would do. I, I think my cycles are around six weeks. Six weeks mini cycles where we. I like that. Six so weeks. We, what would you have him do? Well, I would he'd be squatting twice a week, but one day would be a heavier day, and the other day would either be a back squat, front squat before he deadlifts. Mm -hmm. Right? That'd be like a, a Monday, Thursday. You'd squat on Monday, um, deadlift on Thursday. Um, 
the volume would be, you know, I, I fluctuate the volume, but we'd stay in the 80 to 87 percent range on all that how many, stuff. How many sessions per week? Four. Okay, oh, cool. Okay. Oh, for powerlifting. Or, or, no, 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 just just yeah. not powerlifting. Let's don't do powerlifting. Just oh. generalized kind of dude stuff. Oh, I still like four days. I still yeah, like I do too, right? Yeah. So you can you can do a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. That's the easiest way to do it. It's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Length of session. Monday and Thursday, legs, back, and biceps. Tuesday, Friday, chest, shoulder, triceps. Yep, yep, yep. yep ten yep. sets of body part. Six to ten reps. Ten, ten, uh, ten sets uh, per body part. So what? Uh, like What's that. your session duration? Mine personally is a half hour, man. No, no, no. For for the the four times uh, a week. Anything normal other person. than an hour, you're 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 fooling around. You're looking. Say at again. Them. Anything over an hour, you're fooling around. You Seriously. would have them train as much as an hour, though, in those four sessions per week. An hour. Yeah, they should take about an hour. So here's the here's what I done. Take as much time as you need to get your sets in the squat, the deadlift, and the bench. The rest of the stuff, I want you to push the pace. And eventually mm-hmm. they'll adapt where they're strong at that pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's uh, that's a, uh, any uh, cardio? It depends on the person. Well, I mean, would you advise none? Yeah, if you're or training we... that fast, you don't need it. If you're okay. overweight, yeah. overweight, right. okay. three sessions a week, 30 minutes on the bike, sweating but not killing yourself. Dude, honestly, if you train like that all the time and you even – remotely watch your diet you'll be ripped to shreds yeah well no i i think it's more like if you train like that all the time and really watch your diet you'll yeah, be ripped saying, to shreds. You train that fast also, but i no i don't i don't think it's casual i don't think you can slip pizza and beer in three days a week and call that a diet oh i see what you mean yeah 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 you know i mean <clears throat> when you talk about diet it's uh, it's gruesome. <laughs> but, it, but if there's anything we can highlight from this, I think uh, what you guys said initially is get proper training. Learn how to squat. Learn how to deadlift. These are all exercises that can just wreck you <clears throat> in your, your uh, older age. And you want to be able to walk around and get up out of a chair. And Marty, you always talk about you had the best coaching from age 11 or 14. You started uh, early. Some, somewhere that. Somewhere okay. in the, that so, general range. So now you're a guy in your 70s. You don't have any back no, problems. I'm in my damn 70s. What? <laughs> okay. Don't be casting those right. spurs well, you're, my way. You're, you're close, but you don't you're have very, any back problems. You're very, you're very stumpy-legged. Look, when we're young, we're, we, we think we're invincible. We just want to kick ass, lift all this heavy weight. Okay, but do it right. Do it right. I've got some back issues from all my heavy days of squatting. You know, I'm 47. I'm paying the price now. Um, I just have to be careful. I can still lift. I can't really squat anymore. But, you know, had I had proper coaching right from the beginning. What do you do? You know, I can, but I have to be really careful because. What do you do with your legs? I do. uh, well, you guys aren't going to like this, but I mean, I do a lot of leg extensions. I do uh, leg curls. Oh, there's there's a hack squat that we have at my gym that I like because it doesn't it doesn't oh, load the spine. Well, it, but the one we've got is like a half hack squat. It doesn't load the spine. It's yeah. uh, one of those ones where it's got the pad against your That's back. Yeah. Yep. I like that. The best exercise I like most of all is the belt squat. And we don't have a belt squat machine. I wish we did. So anytime I want to do belt squat, I gotta half-ass rig this thing on the the cable crossover with plyo boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Doing it. Yeah. So I'm st- I'm st- you know you gotta work around stuff like that, but I can't tell you enough. Get proper coaching right out of the gate because this stuff will wreck you. Um, you know, weightlifting is the greatest thing in the world, but do it right. Yeah. We are ver- we are available for a fee. Well, yeah. If you want, if anybody wants to get a hold of uh, Marty or or Jim, uh, just yeah. go to our contact us page at Iron Company, and you can see them there, and um, they can help you out. They've been doing this a long time. Uh, also, also uh, check out Marty's weekly column and podcast, Raw with Marty Gallagher at IronCompany.com. 
Um, and then check out Iron Company for all your fitness equipment and gym flooring needs. And we've got a lot of great products going up on the site. We just uh, added these uh, Atlas stone molds. So we've yeah, got all different sizes, up to 300 pounds. Make Do it yourself. Do you these, fill it with protein powder? You can. <laughs> That's a little expensive, but uh, you might want to use concrete instead. Uh, fan bikes, curved treadmills, so anything you need from flooring on up. And then, uh, of course, Jim Steele, he's now writing articles for the site, and you can find uh, his articles on there under the articles section. Just go to the top of the, the website and, and click on articles. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see his articles there. And well, then, um, excuse me, if, if, yeah. if you're wishing any um, training information after Van Halen broke up, uh, talk to Jim. <laughs> and before, uh, yeah, before it would anything, be you, right? Anything prior to that, call me. <laughs> yeah. All right, and you can also check out Jim's website, BassBarbell.com for... I love, I love that. Training information, motivation, programs, all kinds of good stuff. Thanks. So, other than that, guys, thank you very much, and we're out. Yeah, great. Goodbye. Thank you.